beloved Princeton United Methodist Church community. I'm here today with some members of our leadership and discipleship boards to share with you how we have been moving into our God-given mission, vision, values, and priorities here at PUMC. God has been moving through us in some really exciting ways. Hear again God's vision for us, and then hear the progress that's been made over this past year. We're also sharing with you ways that you can help this vision work to grow even more. Plus, we invite you to see that all of this ministry we'll mention, and much more we won't, is made possible through your financial generosity, which is an outgrowth of your discipleship. Every gift, your gift, matters. God's vision for Princeton United Methodist Church includes these four vision impact statements. First, PUMC practices joy, celebration, abundance, forgiveness, freedom, Sabbath, justice, and shalom, becoming a jubilee community. PUMC empowers people to embrace the fullness of life offered in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. PUMC engages community partners and invites our neighbors to join our vision and efforts to create a more liberated and free greater Princeton community by working to eradicate racial, economic, and social injustice. And lastly, PUMC is committed to creating and maintaining physical, spiritual, and online space that is gracious, restorative, and healing through the images, words, and other elements found there. As we launched the Leadership and Discipleship Boards in 2023, and these boards took ownership of moving PUMC forward toward our God-given vision, mission, and values, we established four top priorities from our strategic vision plan. First, it was about small groups. We set out to establish a small group framework to engage every person in a small group or circle. Second was membership discovery. We aim to establish a system to discover the unique spiritual identities of all congregants. Now, both our small group and membership discovery aims are part of our vision to empower people to embrace that fullness of life offered in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our third priority was about mercy and justice. We endeavored to develop a complete list of community partners already engaged with PUMC and then sought to discern how God is calling us to develop a new mercy and justice ministry as part of our vision to create a more liberated and free Greater Princeton community. Our fourth priority was about generosity. Our goal has been to fully fund the vision, mission, values, and priorities of Princeton United Methodist Church. Here over these next few minutes, we'll share the progress that we together have made on each of these priorities over the past year, and we'll extend an invitation for you to help our congregation move further into the vision that God has for us. We're in the second year of offering small discipleship groups that are foundational to our faith formation. Both short-term seasonal groups and year-long growth groups are supported by curriculum guides that invite participants to dive more deeply into the themes of our worship series. Here are some of the powerful things we've heard from growth group participants. Growth group is the most important time of my week. It's not always easy to get to my growth group, but I work to get there because it's always worth it to show up. The diversity of this church and of our group is amazing. I get to hear stories of people in our group that I would never hear just worshiping with them on Sundays. Being able to join my group by Zoom has made it possible for me to be part of a growth group. Participants in small groups are becoming more joyfully engaged in the life of the church and our community as a result of the growth they experience. Here are some ways you can help small group ministry flourish even more. Join a growth or seasonal group. Invite someone to join a group with you. Explore with Pastor Taylor the possibility of leading or co-leading a group. Membership discovery. The focus this year was on helping each of us discover that as disciples of Jesus, we have unique spiritual identities. 
and that our uniqueness is needed to be the people called Princeton UMC. We're inviting people into ministry based on their spiritual identities and are creating a network of circles to increase opportunities for deepening that discipleship and that sense of belonging. Our Salt and Light Worship Series and the corresponding small group curriculum is a direct result of this priority. Pastoral intern Mary will be focusing on creating the network of circles over the coming months. Also, we're assessing our newcomer group to better address the ways we can help people new to this church find their way into the heart of our congregation. At the same time, we're working to invite established congregants to continuously deepen their discipleship journey. Volume two of our Discipleship at PUMC booklet is planned to launch next fall. Here are some gifts that have emerged from this membership discovery focus. Engagement cards each week in the bulletins updated with current opportunities to feed others and be fed has indeed engaged people in new ways, such as worship leaders, youth group meals provided, and new volunteers for building maintenance. We've had increased engagement of elected and non-elected leaders since 2022. There were 60% more engaged leaders at PUMC in 2023 than the year before, and now there are 12% more engaged leaders this year than last. More than 50 people are discovering their spiritual gifts in small groups this fall. Well, you can help further this membership discovery ministry by filling out an engagement card each week in worship, even if it's just to request a prayer. Discovering your own spiritual identity, your spiritual type, your spiritual gifts, your uniqueness, and share that discovery with your pastors and your small groups. And finally, revisiting your PUMC membership vows. How are you upholding PUMC with your prayer, your presence, your gifts, your service, and above all, your witness? Mercy and Justice. Our initial Justice and Mercy focus group was bolstered by significant support from the Greater New Jersey Conference's Bridges for Congregations program on how to design new ministries with our local community. Together, we prayerfully asked who in our neighborhood community God is particularly calling us to bless, to be in relationship with, or to journey alongside in a new or deeper way this season. The group discerned that God is calling us to be in relationship and solidarity with people at the intersection of mental health and economic justice. A second Justice and Mercy focus group is being formed now. Our Lent worship series will focus on preparing and engaging the congregation, and we anticipate the more formal launch of a new Justice and Mercy ministry in 2025. Along with a discerned, actionable focus on a particular area of racial, economic, and social injustice in our community, the intersection of mental health and economic injustice, we also have a powerful new purpose statement for Justice and Mercy Ministry of PUMC. The Justice and Mercy Ministry of PUMC builds relationships with our neighbors who are hurting, in need, or facing injustice. We stand in solidarity with the most vulnerable among us, working together to create a more just world through God's grace. How you could help us as our Mercy and Justice Ministry emerges Ask God to help you notice and listen to people at the intersection of mental health and economic justice. Watch for opportunities to engage in the emerging ministry in the coming months. Volunteer to talk with justice and ministry focus group members about emerging ideas and plans. Reflect on the purpose statement for justice and mercy ministry, particularly on what it means to build relationships with our neighbors and stand in solidarity with the most vulnerable among us. Because of the progress we have made on small groups, membership discovery, and justice and mercy ministry, we are also moving forward into some of our next priorities, which include clarifying our hospitality, engagement, and congregational care systems to create strong pathways for people to become and remain actively engaged in the PUMC congregation. We are moving toward a culture of radical hospitality. 
There will also be a focus on how our building, our physical and online spaces limit inclusion and participation, and on how these spaces can be more accessible, inclusive, and restorative. Generosity. Since COVID, we have operated with a plant deficit budget, which has been the result of numerous changes in PUMC and shifts more generally in the wider church and culture. We're not alone in this experience. Many other churches are facing very similar challenges. And while we've been making efforts both on the income and spending side of our church's budget, we have not yet achieved a balanced budget and this cannot continue. There is incredible generosity happening in our church. It's humbling to witness the generosity of people who respond to invitations to grow in their discipleship and to information about the missional needs of the church. And there's also much room to grow in generosity here at PUMC. While every gift, regardless of size, makes a difference in helping us live into our mission and vision. We are far too dependent on larger givers and need a stronger base of givers. Far too many people who love and depend on the ministry of PUMC do not contribute intentionally nor regularly. In fact, if every single member and constituent who isn't already giving at this level stepped up to give either $10 per week or $100 per month, we would close our budget deficit immediately. There have been two significant helpful changes in our income and spending over the past year. On the income side, our church building is being used daily by numerous groups from the community. We're home to the Center for Peace Action, a music studio, a French school, 12-step groups, and much more. This provides funding support in addition to the crucial base of giving by members and constituents. On the spending side, when Pastor Skitch received an appointment to another church earlier this year, the leadership board decided to close his position. Pastors Jenny and Taylor have absorbed his responsibilities. PUMC's biggest expenses fall into three categories. Number one is our United Methodist Shared Ministries, which fund missions around the world and are the very heart of being in this worldwide connectional denomination. Number two, the real and significant cost of existing in a 100-year-old building that while a gracious, restorative, hospitable space in which to be the church is expensive to maintain with rising costs for utilities, maintenance, equipments, groundkeeping, repairs, etc. Number three, our beloved pastoral and lay staff who partner with laity to provide worship, pastoral care, and all of the discipleship opportunities to the congregation, and who lead the way in helping us live into our vision, mission, and values. There's not much we can do to change the first two types of expenses, staffing, particularly our pastoral and music ministry areas, are the only places that would allow for significant adjustments. Let me be clear, this year's pledge campaign is pivotal. It's critical that we close the budget deficit and keep it closed going forward. This means that we need an increase of $45,000 in pledges this year to continue with our current level of staffing and discipleship programming in the coming years. Every gift, your gift matters. Remember that in God's kingdom, tiny seeds bring a great harvest. Here are some ways we've seen our prioritization on generosity bear fruit this year. The leadership board has prioritized communication and transparency around church finances, which can be seen in the monthly reports accessible to you through happenings. Conversations about church finances, generosity, why people give, and more have been held over this past year. Small group participants focused on giving and reported a greater understanding of giving as part of their discipleship and how significant every gift is to the church, 
resulting in increased giving and a different approach to decisions about giving. More stability in giving has happened as more people have engaged and been intentional about giving and staying up to date on their pledges. Additional stability has come with increased building use rentals to nonprofit groups in the community. You can help close the deficit and help create a deeper culture of generosity here at PUMC. Here are some ways. As an outgrowth of your discipleship and a commitment to your church, if you're not giving at all yet or haven't yet been a regular giver, can you step up to giving $10 per week? Or perhaps the next step for you is to start giving $100 per month. If you're in the position to do so, step up to giving the PUMC average gift of $3,000 or just increase your giving by 10%. A great way to allow for planning and more accurate budgeting is by automating your giving by participating in our electronic giving program through Breeze or by creating a recurring payment through your bank's bill pay option. We hope that you're inspired by what God is doing in and through us at PUMC. And this video hasn't even tried to touch on the whole of the great harvest that God is doing among us. This kingdom building work can't be done without you and your financial and spiritual contributions. We give as disciples of Jesus, trusting that our contribution, no matter the size, is growing God's kingdom. This is what it is to be a community of faith. All are needed. All give as they can and as they are called. And all these tiny seed gifts come together and grow a great harvest. Please prayerfully consider your contribution for 2025. And as an act of your discipleship of Jesus Christ, Remember, this year's pledge campaign is pivotal. We have a huge kingdom-sized goal. Our goal is to close the deficit gap and keep it closed going forward. To keep our current level of programming and staffing, we need an additional $45,000 each year going forward. But hear this again. If every member and constituent who isn't already giving regularly gave either $10 per week or $100 per month, we would close our budget deficit immediately. Every gift counts. Every gift, your gift matters. In God's kingdom, by God's grace, tiny seeds do indeed yield great harvest.